Thank you. Frame 14. Well, Mark Selby Mark breaking Selby off in break. frame 14. He hopes it's the last time he breaks off in this match. Because that means he'll be the victor. Will it be this frame or the next? But if Selby loses another, <coughs> maybe he won't be too concerned till about 8 6. So this frame is the one that he'll try and close the match out. Otherwise, he's put pressure on himself for no reason. That was a nice shot. Very well played. He's got the feel and he's growing in confidence. And his hopes are hanging by a thread. Yes, that red on the side cushion caused him a little bit of a problem here. It's slightly thinner than he would like. Has he hit the red? Oh, goodness me. Turned out to be an excellent safety for a moment. I thought he careered into the red. A yeah, little tap on the table there from Nicky Walden. Even in the heat of battle, I like to see the sportsmanship. If he misses the brown, this looks like another good safety. <laughs> He's starting to find that port cushion. It certainly helps. Surely it's touching. Touching ball. Yeah. It's been like hitting a brick wall, that cue ball then. Well, so how could you tell from here? Commentator's eye? Commentator's eye. It essentially covers the one loose red up. Doesn't really matter about. It. Players don't try and get snooker an opponent here. They try and make them hit the pack. So it's no good playing and trying to get right in behind a colour. They'd rather get on the board cushion and force them to play a safety shot. He doesn't want to leave this long red on, he might take it on. He'd much rather see the pack and open a few reds out. And he's got to be careful here, Mark. There's that loose red on the left-hand side of the table. He doesn't want to leave a chance of the pot for Ricky on that. And he needs to cover something. Does the brown come to his rescue? Does the Brown come to his rescue? I don't think so. I don't think so. He can get through to this red. Suddenly his safety's gone a bit astray, John. So be that is. Yeah. A few arrows creeping in. And we could keep on top. Had to play the red. Nothing's easy at this stage, particularly when you're trailing as Ricky is, but he had to take it on. He's not going to win this match by not refusing shots like that. Didn't have a lot of idea where the cue ball was going to go there, but essentially just to make sure the red, and now he's got an excellent kiss. The brown is on. The red right at the back of the pack will pot, I think. He's just coming around to see if it does. If it doesn't, he can get on the one below the black. The one at the back of the pack does pot in the right-hand corner. He's played for this one on this side cushion. Don't blame him for that. Five.
six. That's the red that was always available. And like I say, if this had been early on in the match, Mark Selby would have gone in between the gap of those reds and opened a few more 13. into play because it's frame and match. He's just trying to be a little bit ultra careful at the minute. Now he's got the angle again to play the same 14. shot I was talking about. See, there's a lovely gap in between those two reds. If he gets through those, just opens them up. I think he's trying to be ultra careful at the minute, John. JV's just put a line up for me there. I mean, I like that shot. If you kiss the red on the outside, it's OK. He's just coming to see what happens if it gets the kiss. But he's going to have to open them up sometime. Why not when you've got the perfect angle? But he's not playing it this time. Just surprised me a little, I've got to be honest. Especially the way he's played that shot. Yeah, he looks... 21 to his shell a little bit. Maybe thinking, uh, well, I'll just try and play a no-risk game. And I'm bound to get that frame I need, but snooker's a funny game. If you don't play the right shot sometimes, it comes back to haunt you. <coughs> 22. Well, he's got the blue. He could have finished up on nothing with a couple of rolls. Yeah, if he'd end up touching the brown, of course, but he was only a fraction away from doing so. And, uh, he'd like to get the white somewhere where his knee is. It's on the table at the moment, and it's an easy shot to get onto the black. He doesn't want to leave this, this red at distance, which he has done now, so he still should be OK, though. Because when you're playing the shot slow, if you just cut it slightly thinner than you want to, you can lose the white a little bit, but the pink will be available in the middle. Twenty-eight. It's all about getting rid of that red, isn't it? The one that's just to the right of the black. That's causing a slight problem at the minute, and you can't get rid of it off this next shot. So he's played into them there, and that was nowhere near as good a chance to get onto a red as it was the previous time. 35. left with is this red to the far left corner. Yeah, it goes, it's 36. But he's not in perfect position. Good pot. It's in the shot to what Ricky had in the last frame where he had to play the brown two cushions for the one to the right of the pink. Ricky had a shot like that and Played it well. Mark's also played it well. Uh, just needs to be straight on this black now so he can get rid of that red that's Sporting. causing a problem. He can't get straight on the black, can he? 41. Here's his chance to get rid of the red that's causing all the problems at the moment. He can only play the black in one pocket at the minute. now has a chance for frame and match. Yes. 48. Just over four and three quarter hours. 49. In perfect position. And Ricky Walden, I'm sure, sitting there thinking he's highly unlikely to get another shot in this match.
56. Fifty seven. Just a red and a colour needed to seal the deal. Sixty four. This black. 65. We're putting 72 points in front with just 67 remaining. <laughs> well, if you roll in, he'll be very disappointed the way 72. he played. Okay, there was a little bit of a comeback from 8 2 down, but you always just felt he'd left himself a little bit too much to do. And Mark Selby is taking these very well. And what a final in prospect, John. The world number one, the world number two in the final of the second biggest tournament we have on our calendar. We yeah, have something to say that. 80. 80. And of course, Mark Selby, defending champion. 81. And there's not many players retain this title. Chance of the 80th century of the tournament. 87. And this will be Mark Selby's fourth, but I think he'll remember his third for quite some time. 88. Well, they didn't get the best of contacts there, so it might finish on 88, but it won't matter. Oh, is that tears little of joy? tear, yes, little tear from Vicky. She knows her husband's done the, the job this evening and nodded his best. Good recovery. She's happy now. 95. 96. Well played. Very well played indeed. We've been told this evening well, that he's not been at his best. But you just know something about Mark. One hundred and four. He will dig in and he will somehow find a way. Well, when a player's out of form, you don't expect them to make a century. Never mind about a 147 and 109 and count him when this blue goes in. Yep. As I say, he's got the perfect temperament for the game. 109. It's not all about potting balls. 111. Yeah, when he came into the club as a 14-year-old lad and just played hours and hours on his own, never at that time did we ever think he could be doing what he's doing now and doing it so well. 114. Oh, I should have seen that kiss on the back from injunction. <laughs> Cross on the blue. Is he going to finish on the pink? 123. 129. <laughs> <laughs> Both wow. to one foot on the floor. Mark Selby, 129, with the Roland 7, swimming the match. To finish the match off, Mark Selby, his wife Vicky and her father there, absolutely overjoyed. Spare a thought for Ricky Rowland, he'd be very disappointed. But Mark Selby, the defending champion, is in the final again. Tomorrow, he plays the world number one, Neil Robertson. What a matchup! England versus Australia. Mark Selby wins, nine frames to five.